Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Uh, a special welcome to any of our guests that are with us and those that have joined us online. We are glad you are here this morning. Well, I invite you to stand as you are able as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning. <clears throat> From generation to generation, we gather as children of God, named and claimed by the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we sing Faith of Our Fathers, hymn number 813. God established a covenant with the generations before us, a covenant that continues today and will carry future generations. Yet like our ancestors, we have not been faithful to God's promises.
Together, let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of all generations, you call us into a promised relationship with you. We receive mercy and grace in this relationship, but we often fail to extend it to our neighbors. We break our promises, look to our own interests, and forget to thank you for all you entrusted to us. Forgive us, Lord, and set us free to live in love toward you, our neighbors, and all of creation. Amen. We'll hear the good news. From one generation to the next, God has been forgiving and gracious. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free. It's God, as God's beloved, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. We sing together, Come All You People, hymn number 819. pray together. God of all generations, as you blessed Abraham and Sarah, you promised them what seemed impossible. Your promise make the impossible possible. Thank you for the foundation of faith that began with and continues with the promise of your blessing for all generations. Amen. You may be seated. Our reading is from Genesis, the 17th chapter. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer, shall my, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. 
for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now alien, all the land of Canaan, for a land for a perpetual holding, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you, throughout their generations. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abram fell, Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Can Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live in your sight. God said, No, but your wife Sarah shall bear a son, you a son, and you shall name him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will bless him and make him fruitful and exceedingly numerous. He shall be the father of 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you, at this season next year. Thank you, Diane. I want to invite the kids forward to join me for a message today. If we've got any kids here. No, we got a couple. I saw you. Even if it's just one of you, that'll be great. But you know what? I'm going to have a job for you. So you're not going to be able to sit very long. Okay? Fair enough. Do you know what a generation is? What's a generation? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like one, a, a set of ages. So like you are... A generation of kids and your parents are in your family a generation of adults and one day if you have children they'll be a generation of kids and you'll be a generation of adults and so it's like a, a family that continues to grow further and further along the line Have you ever been to a family reunion yeah where everybody gets together and it's like you find out that your cousins was so-and-so and your aunt is this person here and and You've got great aunts and great uncles and cousins and things, and, and you're all a part of a great big family. Well, we've been talking about generation to generation, and we've been talking about generations as the people who are the founders of our faith this past month. And uh, I was thinking about that a little bit, and I was thinking about uh, Abraham and Sarah, that our first parents that started the generation. And so I want you to do me a favor. Every time we, you get to a, a, every time you get to one foot, a one foot stop, one foot mark, so it'll see a foot, and then you'll see another foot, and then another foot. I want you to stop. So start walking. And walk, and you get to a foot. There, you stop, and you get to another foot. You stop. Keep walking now. Now go to Go to 14 feet. Keep walking backwards. You got a little ways to go. In the Gospel of Matthew, we're told that there are 14 generations between Abraham and King David. Are you at 14 yet? All right. And then we're told there's 14 more generations. So go again, but you're not going to be able to go all 14 generations. You're going to go all the way up to 25, and it's going to stop. There's 14 generations then between 
David in the time that the Israelites went to Babylon. Are you at 25 feet there? So now I'm going to move three feet forward, and you're going to move three feet backwards. So keep going until we're straight again. Keep going backwards. All right. And then we're told that there's 14 more generations from, you stay there now, 14 more generations from Babylon to Jesus. So let me know when that gets to 14 feet. You stay there, though. You can't move. Ah, technology. Is that 14 feet yet? Okay. Now you start walking. Leave it at 14 feet. You start walking backwards yet. Keep walking at 14 feet. Keep it at 14 feet. Keep walking backwards. Keep walking backwards. Keep walking backwards. And here was about where you were at. Keep walking backwards. Keep it at 14 feet. Is it still 14 feet? Is it 14 feet yet? 14 additional feet. So that was 42 generations of people just from Abraham and Sarah to Jesus. Now that's a lot of families, right? You can come back now. I just wanted to show you how much that was. That's a lot of families. And now imagine in the 2,000 plus years since Jesus, how many more families have, have come and gone since then. Can you imagine that? How many more families there have been since Jesus' time here on earth? Do you think we'd have at least another 42 families? 42 generations? Maybe pretty close, yeah. You see, God was faithful to that very first generation, Abraham and Sarah, and was faithful to that generation that led to King David, and faithful to that generation that went into exile in Babylon, and, faith, and faithful to that generation that waited until Jesus, and is faithful to all generations now. And so we give God thanks for being faithful to a long line of generations. And think of how many generations of people that have sat in these pews here at St. John's, 125 plus years of people that have named and claimed St. John's as their home church. Uh, and it's incredible. God has been faithful throughout all of that. And so this morning, I just want you to remember how faithful God is to all generations. So will you pray with me? And we'll ask our friends to, to repeat after me as well. Dear God, thank you for your faithfulness. That began a long time ago with an old couple named Abraham and Sarah. And continues today with all of us. Your promises are incredible. And only you can keep them. Thank you for being the promise keeper of our lives. Amen. Okay, you can return to your seats. <coughs> Excuse my cough there. Broken saints and gleaming sinners, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I uh, have a habit of uh, pulling out a bunch of old photos uh, of family members of mine and putting them uh, in my office. Right now, I don't have those photos in my office. They're still in a storage shed uh, at our house. Uh, but I often put them up and I look and I've got a p graduation picture of my mother, a graduation picture of my father. I've got a picture of my grandpa from when he was in World War II. Um, and uh, then I've got pictures of Pat and I, before we had children, and then after we had children, when we didn't look nearly as happy. Um, just kidding. We've got pictures of our, our children and then our grandchildren as well. And I keep those generations up there to remind me that the story does not end with me. Nor did it begin 
with me. The story of my family began with uh, folks that spoke languages that I cannot speak. German, Swedish, Danish. The story of Pat's family began with generations that spoke languages which she cannot speak. Czech, Czech, whatever Czechoslovakian people speak. And the story, however, continues on. Continues from her parents and my parents through us to our children, to our grandchildren, and for generations to come. Abraham and Sarah were getting on in years. Abraham had celebrated a milestone birthday of 100. And God told Abraham that he and Sarah were going to be the parents to numerous generations, that God was going to bless them to be a blessing to all nations, to all peoples, and that God was going to give them family and flocks and finances that would cover uh, and bless them with uh, great riches, and they would be a blessed, be blessed to be a blessed, excuse me, blessed to be a blessing for others. And Abraham laughed at that promise. He laughed at that promise because he was a hundred, and his wife Sarah was in her nineties, and. How could such an incredible promise happen to two people that were what they viewed as old and broken down and unable to make that promise happen? And so Abraham said, well, maybe Ishmael, the child that we, we sought to conceive through uh, Sarah's uh, handmaid, Hagar, maybe he should be the one that will continue on the blessing. And God said, no. Sarah will conceive. She'll have a child. And you're going to name him Isaac. And the word Isaac means laughter. I believe God took great delight in making sure the promise of faith, the promise of God's covenant, to be Abraham and Sarah's God begins with laughter. It begins with delight and joy. And that promise then unfolds for generation to then a generation to generation to generation. And along the lines, if you were to read in uh, the opening of Matthew's gospel, you would hear about people that were not, not necessarily the best people to be part of a blessing, but God blessed them anyways. God blessed Isaac's grandson. J uh, excuse me, God blessed Isaac's son, Jacob even though he stole the birthright from his brother. God blessed a, a grandson of Jacob who was born by Tamar, who had to prostitute herself in order to get uh, a son uh, to continue the lineage of Abraham's family. And on down the line, you'll see that there are people in the generations that lead up to Jesus who have not always lived a great life. But God's incredible promise of blessing continued through that lineage all the way up to Jesus. And then Jesus told his disciples that they're responsible now for sharing the blessing. At the end of Matthew, Jesus says to his disciples, as he is uh, revealing himself to his disciples after the resurrection, he says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And remember, you are with me always. Or I am with you always, excuse me, he says. I am with you always until the end of the age. That the presence and promise of Jesus the Messiah and Savior of all people continues the blessing. Now I asked the kids if they'd been to a family reunion and they said yes. And uh, for most parts, family reunions are incredible things. They're great times to get together with family, to hear stories, to share stories, to remember, uh, and they're also times to look forward. And at family reunions, though, it's a time to hear the story. And sometimes we hear the same story over and over again, but we hear it in new and incredible ways. In our family, uh, we often hear uh, stories of uh, how my, on, my, on the Nelson side of the family, how my grandpa Nelson was a hog buyer for armor in uh, South St. Paul. And uh, we hear stories about how grandpa uh, kept track of all of his purchases just by keeping all the numbers in his head. Incredible. That gift didn't get passed on. It skipped my generation, by the way. Incredible. But sometimes that story changes, and, and, or somebody will add to it, and my Aunt Dorothy will say, oh yeah, and did you know that Grandpa was the, Grandpa was the treasurer at Augustana Luther Church? And when, as he was treasurer, um, uh, he kept the books, uh, again, uh, to the number, and was never off. And every time they had an audit, no one had any questions about it at all. And we hear these stories, and we think, wow, that is incredible uh, giftedness of God that God gifted him with that gift and, and wants us to know about that. In the same way, you and I are responsible for sharing the stories of Jesus, of his love and grace, forgiveness and life, of his hospitality, of his warmth, of his healing, of everything about him with the generation that is to follow us. And for some of us, it's a number of generations now. And for some of us, it's very few generations. But we are called and invited to participate in sharing this story with one generation to the next and making it become their own. Making it seem like it's their story because it is. And so it's so important that we share with our kids and grandkids and kids that aren't our grandkids but are here around the church, that we share the stories of faith that communicate the importance of a God who loves us, that God came, became one of us, died for us, rose for us, and lives for us. This week we had vacation, by, or excuse me, this week we had uh, Luther Crest Day Camp here. If you were here for Luther Crest Day Camp uh, for any part of it or helped out, raise your hand for a second. It was an incredible thing to see kids hearing God's word, singing God's word, dancing to God's word, delighting in God's word, one generation to the next. We can never let that story cease. And so friends, I invite you to remember that you pass on a legacy, you pass on a story to each and every generation so that they may grow in faith and become a blessing to be a blessing to others. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able. And together we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of promise, we thank you for promises spoken long ago to Abraham and Sarah, that they would begin a family that would be a blessing for generations to come. As heirs of your promise, keep us faithful to proclaiming your steadfast love and make us a blessing to the next generations. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of promise, we are surrounded by the beauty of your creation. The earth, skies, waters, and heavens testify to your wonder and majesty. We ask you to bless all of creation with your life-giving presence. Encourage each of us to steward what you have created so the blessing of the earth and heavens are enjoyed by the next generations. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of promise, we pray for the promises, the promise of peace for all people and for all places. Where lives are torn apart by violence and injustice, we pray for peace. Where nations are in conflict and, and in war, we pray for peace. Where those who are marginalized and live in fear, we pray for peace. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God of promise, by your promises, you make even what seems impossible possible. As you used Abraham and Sarah in their advanced years to begin a new blessing, help us to trust your promise to heal and bless all who are in need. We ask that you bring wholeness and healing to Glenn Rosenberg, Lake and Gretchen Wagner, Ken Schumacher, Vernette Heidenreich, Gary Geisinger, Marilyn Nilsson, Jim Foldenauer, Betty Nilsson, and Clayton Disperly. We lift up those who we name silently before you and those who have no one to pray for them. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. God, a promise you have assured of, of us of the promise of a new creation because of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of your son, Jesus. Help us to recognize the signs of resurrection all around us. Bless those in our family of faith who grieve and remind them of the power of your promise of resurrection. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all these things for which we pray, as we know with confidence that we can trust in your great faithfulness. Amen. Will the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. <clears throat> Well, you may be seated and we will continue with the receiving of our offering and, and know that your offering goes to many different things, of course, it, but it provides opportunities like we had this week for our Luther Crest uh, counselors to come and run a day camp. Um, it, the cost was not covered, of course, by what the kids could provide. We, we wanted to make sure it was affordable and we're able to do that because of the gifts from you because of your support for the ministries of St. John's, because of your support, these young people had an opportunity to experience uh, the life-giving beauty of, of Christ, the life-changing love of Christ in a unique way through camp, a camp experience here at St. John's. So thank you for your gifts. We will continue with the receiving of our offering, and again, the joyful jar is up front.
invite you to stand as you are able. We pray together. Generous God, in every age you have abundantly provided your people with gifts of goodness and grace. We offer these gifts to you in appreciation for all you do for us and for the opportunity to participate in sharing your blessing with others. Multiply these gifts so that others may know the gift of your faithfulness all generations. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We will commune with two stations, and your ushers will direct you forward. As you, as you come forward, um, you can grab an empty cup if you prefer the wine, or you can grab a pre-filled cup if you prefer the alcohol-free uh, grape juice. Then move to receive the bread. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, place your index finger up, and your server will extend the plate, and you can grab a wafer that's in the cup uh, on the middle of that plate. Then move to receive the wine or the blessing for the grape juice, and then place your uh, empty cup in the aisle, in the middle aisle, as you return to your seats. 
Uh, know that there are elements in the back. For whatever reason, if you prefer not to come forward or prefer to bring one home with you, you are more than welcome to do that. Um, hear these words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And know that this is the Lord's table. And the Lord says, all are welcome. So, all are welcome. You are welcome. So come, for all is ready.
We pray together. Loving Lord, gathered at your table, you feed us as you have fed those before us and will feed those who follow us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. In this mealtime, unite us with all your saints and strengthen us for service in your world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, just a couple quick announcements this morning. Uh, a reminder of, uh, well, 4th of July fun is shortly uh, upon us. Uh, we're still looking for a few people to work some different shifts of the taco booth, so please take a, a gander out at the board or go online to the Sign Up Genius on our website to look for a spot you could possibly help. Also, we're still looking for more water, whether water bottles or certainly if you would like to give a gift and we can buy a large quantity on that, is, that it would be great too. Um, I think besides the, the, the usual that you hear me say every day, every Sunday, or Pastor Todd says every, every, every Sunday, and, and that's when everybody starts to tune out, right? And you start, like, packing up. Yeah? Go ahead. Just kidding. But we're always looking for volunteers, okay? We're just, we're going to tell you that every week, because we love you, that's why. All right? But thank you for all those that have, have stepped forward this Sunday to volunteer. Uh, we are grateful for you. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able and receive the blessing. May the God of steadfast love and grace fill you with joy, strengthen you in love, and send you forward in faith. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we will sing On Our Way Rejoicing, hymn number 537. With open arms to all, together we live and share the love of Jesus. Go in peace, serve God and your neighbors. We will. Thanks be to God. <laughs>